Hello, Anthony. How are you doing? Oh, Anthony, the only, um, I'm doing a, a loan chat right now just for the first part of it. And then you can come up. So, but I, I couldn't find anything black to put underneath my, um, mouse. Hey, Anna. And so I grabbed a DVD case that was mostly dark colored. It's working for the most part, but I got to go to the art store and find some black paper. <laughs> and I'm just waiting for some people to show up before I get started. So it usually takes a few minutes. No, oh, not too bad. Been running around like a crazy woman today trying to get stuff done. <laughs> I got my other um, slushy mix, so we'll have to arrange for a time for you to come over. Hello to everybody that just came in. I'm just waiting a couple more minutes for some more people to show up before I get started. <laughs> yep, Anthony. Usually when I'm out and about, I'm running around like a crazy person. So, hello, Gana. Welcome. Hey, Nancy, are you home yet? Oh, I bet that's nice. How much snow do you guys have? A lot. <laughs> well, I bet you're warmer than we are. We're sitting at about five degrees or something like that. Just going to wait another minute or two and then I'll get started. Ah, you're in the 20s. Okay. You'll probably have that snow for a little while. coffee. I wish I could drink coffee, but can't do that. So, okay. Today we're going to talk about mental illness and chronic pain. Um, for those of you that deal or, or even just pain in general, for those of you that deal, hello rogue, with pain, chronic pain, or, you know, any kind you know that it can really drag you down mentally and physically. And I just today kind of want to talk about that. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk in a little bit about ways that you deal with it 
and stuff, but I found some, if I can get my mouse to go, um, I found something on WebMD, which I find to be a pretty good source of information. And it's 11 tips for living with chronic pain. And some of these I was not aware of. And I'm just going to run down them kind of quick. And then we can talk about them or anything else related to this if you want. So, so if you're somebody that deals with a lot of chronic pain and you're looking for some ways to deal with it, here's some suggestions. Um, first one, learn deep breathing or meditation to help you relax. And I find that to be a really good thing. And, and the, something great about meditation or relaxation is it doesn't have to be, you know, really in depth or take a class or anything like that. You can literally just sit in a quiet spot in your house and focus on something pleasant for a while, whether it's a trip to the beach or your dog or, you know, your grandkid or whatever. Just focus on something that really gives you a lot of peace and just try really hard to keep your mind focused on that for like 10 minutes, you know, or start with five minutes, set a timer and just gradually increase the time until you're relaxing for like a half hour at a time. And you'll find that it will give you the feeling like you've just taken a nap. It's really nice. So meditation and relaxation Add deep breathing into that while you're focusing on, on that thing, and it will really add to the relaxation. Um, the second thing they have on here is to reduce stress in your life. Stress intensifies chronic pain, and you probably know that. Um, you know, depression and anxiety can really add to stress. Being angry all the time can really add to stress. So, you know, that kind of goes back to the deep breathing and the meditation and relaxation that will help you to reduce stress. So those kind of go hand in hand. Um, number three, boost chronic pain relief with the natural endorphins from exercise. For some of that, hey, Carrie Ann, for some of us, that is very difficult. Um, you know, talk to your doctor if you're if you're limited in mobility. Talk to your doctor about what the best way for you to get exercise is. You know, even if it's just real basic stuff, just a little bit of movement every day can help give you some natural endorphins. Okay, hang on, gotta find the next page. If my mouse will cooperate. <laughs> Ugh, there we go. Hang on a second here. Oh boy. Hang on. I got to get something under my mouse. It's better than a CD case. Okay. So number four, cut back on alcohol, which can worsen sleep problems. And if you're not sleeping right, your pain is going to be more. And some people think that alcohol takes care of their pain and all that kind of stuff. And all it really does is mask it for a while. and then. When you sober up, the pain is a lot of times worse because you haven't slept properly and all that kind of stuff. So number five, they have join a support group and meet others living with chronic pain. And I have found that to be a really good thing to just get together with other people that deal with the same thing that you do and chat about it and know that you're not alone. Um Here's one I need to pay attention to. Don't smoke. It can worsen chronic pain. It worsens circulation problems and, of course, increases your risk of heart disease and cancer. So that's kind of a duh. I need to work on that. Um, number seven, they say track your pain level and activities every day. Um, to effectively treat your pain, your doctor needs to know how you've been feeling between visits. Keeping a log or a journal of your daily pain score will help you track your pain. At the end of each day, note your pain level on the 1 to 10 pain scale. Also note what activities you did that day and take this logbook to your doctor on every visit. And this will give your doctor a very good understanding of how you're living with chronic pain and your physical functioning level. Then they can know how to treat you better, you know, give you the right medications or exercises or whatever. Hello, Donna. 
Um, this next one I have a lot of experience with and I know it works really well. Learn biofeedback to decrease migraine and tension headache pain. Um, biofeedback, here's how it works. You wear a sensor that lets you hear or see certain bodily functions like pulse, digestion, body temperature, and muscle tension. The squiggly lines or beeps on the attached monitors reflect what's going on inside your body. You then learn to control the squiggles and beeps. After a few sessions, your mind has trained your biological system to learn the skills. So when I did biofeedback, it was for tension headaches. And you can actually learn to make yourself relax. Even the things that you didn't know you could relax, like the muscles in your head and stuff, you can learn to have control over all those muscles and make them relax. And that will help with different kinds of headaches. Um, number nine, I like this one. Get a massage for chronic pain relief. Um, it can help reduce stress, relieve tension, and is really good for all kinds of chronic pain, including back pain and neck pain. Um, and as for me, as long as they don't do it too hard, I, I get a lot of relief from that. Number 10, eat a healthy diet if you're living with chronic pain. Um, they have lots of suggestions, but I'm sure most of us know what a healthy diet is. Not a lot of junk food, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, low fat, low sodium, things like that. All of that helps keep your body systems working as well as they can and gives you the best possible chance of being in less pain. And number 11, and we're going to talk a lot about this one. This is real important. Find ways to distract yourself from pain so you enjoy life more. When you focus on the pain, it makes it worse rather than better. You know, instead of focusing on it, find a way to distract yourself from it and, you know, do something else other than just sit there and wallow in your pain. So we're going to talk some more about ways to do that and other ways that we find to deal with this. So, Anthony, if you want to pop up now, I just wanted to go over that real quick. And that gives us a whole springboard of areas to talk about. Um, so, and I see, you know, Anthony just said the thing is most of us can't afford that healthy. Um, yeah, healthy eating is very difficult. It's, I'm, I'm on a, they, I mean, I understand losing weight, you have to eat healthy, but holy cow, it is crazy impossible to find stuff that I can afford that's healthy. So, and Donna says when it crochets, it helps me get my mind off the pain. That's a very good distraction technique. So, hello, Anthony. Does anybody else want to come up and join this conversation? I will put the link. Hey, Canadian. You put the link in the chat. You're welcome to come up. And so what do you do to deal with pain, Anthony? Can't hear you. Nope. <laughs> We're having technical issues. How about now? Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Let me, I, let me I get still had it, wrong, had it on the wrong mic. No, I mean, a lot of times I, I just go to a dark room by myself. Because, and, and I know this, everybody does, especially the wife. I've learned that I get very agitated when people ask me what's wrong. Because a lot of times I don't, you know, I don't want to take the, you know, you're aggravated because you're hurt and you don't want to explain. So you go off in the room, meditate by yourself and, and you pray to God. No one's stupid enough to walk in and disturb you. <laughs> yep. Just like me, like when I'm in pain and, and chronic in pain, like, and my mental yeah. status is like high, I try to like, I breathe a lot. I try to meditate. I try to calm myself down physically 
and emotionally because my emotions are super attached to well, my pain levels. So I start getting a pain, like I like I cry like a baby kind of thing. But yeah, I try well, to focus all of it on other things. I try to go on social media. I try to like, oh, no. I do my history. I read. I try not to think about it, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's one place I will not go, social media, because it usually, because I'm one of them people, I don't suffer for depression at all. So every, all my pain gets turned into straight anger. Yeah. So I have to meditate because I'm one of them people, I'm, I'm a very highly self-controlled person and I will not beat myself up. But if I don't meditate, I will beat your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah. I'm not talking physically. I'm talking about mentally. Like, you know, I, like the wife should come in and ask me, are you okay? And uh, I mean, I'll just like leave me the, you know, yeah. Yeah. Go away. Wow. Go away. Yeah. I'm trying to give you fair warning. Just go away. Just go away. Yeah. I, I, I find that it depends on the level of pain that I'm in. If I, yeah. if I'm just, in pain from doing my daily stuff, then I can like go on YouTube or whatever and distract usually, myself. Yeah, I usually but, try to stay with you, away from YouTube when I'm hurting because it just makes me more agitated. If if I wake up and I'm yeah. in a ton of pain and I can't get control of it, or if yeah. I end up with a migraine or something, yeah, YouTube is not the place to be because I get yeah. real irritated real fast. I just have to go away and. Yeah. Lay down, be in a quiet, dark room. A lot, you, know, you know, that's why I try to tell her a lot of times my pain is not like severe to where I'm screaming, but it's just that constant, you know, it's, it's that, it's that, you know, that little kid poking the bear. I'm here. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they just don't want to go away no matter what you do sometimes. But like I said, I usually go off, try to be by myself, even if I got to go out in the shop, in the room. I mean, hell, so, I mean, you got a lot of people around you. Sometimes you got to lock yourself in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I, use, uh, I use social media to, like, distract myself, like, uh, to avoid my pain. So I don't have to think about it. Because my yeah. brain goes 100 miles an hour, and it's like, I can't shut it off. I need something yeah. to think about other than what's going on. Yeah. And then I try to ignore it. Uh, subside it but then later on after that happens it just gets worse so yeah then I, I understand I go in a dark room and I try to or you know get away from people try to just think for myself <laughs> well yeah I mean you you know them now but in the past you did you had to learn them the hard way <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean she knows I mean my wife knows my signs now but in the beginning <laughs> She didn't know me. She would get aggravated and get upset with me, you know. And you know, because you know, when you hurt, you say things you might not want to say. But that's true. Yep. Yeah. Well, that goes with anger too. I mean, if, even if you're angry, um, and you say things out of context or say things that you yeah. you know don't mean. I mean, that's, yeah. That's yeah, but you know, some I was people that way a couple days ago. Yeah, some people ain't thick skin and they take it personal. <laughs> yeah. 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 They do. I know. I've you know I've got several different things that I do when I'm dealing with a lot of pain. My dogs are an incredible distraction, you know, and they actually get me up and moving, which is really good. You know, I have to, I have to go outside and work with them, and train them, and play with them, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And that takes me out of myself and out of my pain and. Yeah. You know, even even if it's hurting to walk or whatever, I know that they need me to do this stuff with them. So I get out there and do it, and I usually feel better when I come in. And they come and cuddle me when we when we come in, and that makes me feel better too. So it's kind of like a natural DJI kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's, that's normally so. that's normally the reason when my side and my hip start bothering me. That's usually why I'm so tired at the end of the day because. I have I have those pains where your muscles ball up and I can't just relax because the more I try to relax, the more it wants to ball up, you know. Yeah. It make you straight. I could be laying down and it make me come straight to my feet without even jumping. I mean, I'm up. 
Yeah. And I found if I keep moving, it, you know, it lessens the pain. But the thing is, after a while, you know, you're constantly moving, moving, and your body's like, hey, I know you need to move, but you can't do this. You know, one half trying to say sit down, the other half saying don't sit down, you know. <laughs> yep. End of the day, I'm just, yeah. yeah. And I, I find I have to kind of time it. I have to get up and do some moving and then sit down for a while get up and do a little moving, sit down for a while. I have to alternate all throughout the day or else I yeah. stiffen up if I don't move and I stiffen up if I move too much. So, Well, that's why I was the first year after I got out of ICU when I had my deal. And I tell people that was the majority reason why I don't work anywhere and they just disable me because you know as well as me, I don't care where you work, they're not going to cater to you standing for four hours, sitting for three hours, get up for another three hours, sit down for four hours. And they're like, no, no, you, you know, cause your productivity is like shit. So, wow. yeah. And I mean, I was, I was a state inspector, so, you know, I couldn't just walk off. Those <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, if, if there's a piece of machinery running or concrete flowing, I had to be there to measure it and do tests on it and all that. And I'm like, nah, man, this ain't, yeah, I'm out. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I fought for two years to stay working, try to get back to work. And, and finally, they just told me, I mean, Social Security called me and said, look, just right, stop and come sign the papers. Yeah. So, right. I mean, a lot of people got mad at me because, you know, they came to me so fast, you know, because I, I know people have been fighting Social Security for 10 years. I still don't have it. But I told him, I said, I didn't stub my toe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, technically and medically, I'm not even supposed to be here. So, yeah. so when I come out of the coma, they like to shit in their pants. Mm. That and the fact I try to escape, but, you know. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah. Let, learn the lesson. Don't try to run down ho hallways and try to go through magnetic doors with tubes coming out of the orifice of your body. It does not work. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and believe it or not, them doors give a little bit and then they sling you about 30 feet back down the hallway. <laughs> right. When I hit it full force and the doors did this and I heard it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. I should have listened to that one little nurse. I remember her hollering at me. She was like, because I got to the one tube left coming out of the top of my head. It was a white one. And I remember her going, don't pull. And that's all I heard because by then I had jerked on it. And when the pain hit me, I, I was out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I know I woke up two weeks later and they had me tied in the bed. <laughs> Yeah, those straps and like on your hands and. Oh feet. yeah, I was strapped like this, feet strapped open wide. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. That's crazy. They said even when I was sleeping, I was constantly fighting in my sleep. Oh wow. Because uh, when I pulled the little escape deal, they put me in a uh, in an induced coma, and I was still fighting. So. Sorry about that. That was Ken. We got we got good news about his child support. It's over. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, that's right. She turned eighteen, didn't she? Yes, she did, and she quit high school. So. And she's not in school, so yep, yep. Uh, hey, hey, I'm gonna tell you when they extended that to twenty six. That's bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say. I don't care who you are, even if you're a deadbeat dad. That's bullshit. You know. <laughs> yep. So I'm really sorry, Andy. I didn't actually hear what you were just saying. Yeah. So we haven't really heard much from Nancy. Um, what do you do to deal with your pain? Because you, you're kind of in, in an interesting situation where you're fairly immobile. What do you do? All right. Well, I have. I don't know. I'm still learning how to deal with my pain. Cause I mean, I lash out when I get into pain. I lash out. And I'm learning how to deal with that and not do that. You know. But yeah. But you got to remember too. If someone really loves you, Nancy, they understand. Cause I mean, especially someone like me. Cause I know. I know the, how it is to deal with pain. And and you got people want to help you, but 
sometimes the help they give you just irritates you more than it does anything. Right. Am I, am I seeing this right? Is it your birthday? Yes. Happy oh, birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I don't want to see no rest records and something about Mel Strip Club, all right? <laughs> and, it, and it looks like Hannah and Canadian witches are sitting in the same car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good trick considering you don't even live in this car. I know, they look like they're on opposite side, like she turned around, get out of my car. <laughs> Uh, okay. yes. <laughs> so, Canadian witches, what do you do to deal with your pain? Hey, Julie. Hi, Julie. Um, Hi, Julie. What I do for my pain is uh, cannot hear you at all. Yeah, you're no. real low. How about now? Is that better? A little yeah. tiny bit. My volume. Weird. Uh, what I do for my pain, uh, it was a learning process. Because uh, I have fibromyalgia and other things, but uh, the biggest one is fibromyalgia. Uh, uh, heating pads. Um, heat is the most thing that works the best uh, painkillers but I try not to um, and like you said Susan it's a, a balance between um, resting and activity like it, it you gotta it takes a long time to learn your um, uh like where your threshold is. So, yeah, yeah that, that was the hardest part for me to learn that I'm not 20 no more and I'm not Superman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the hardest thing for me to accept because I was always gone, gone. I was actually a workaholic. I mean, I'd have two to three jobs, you know. So I was constantly going. I mean, I might have got, I remember at one time I was working three jobs with four and a half hours sleep between all three of them. Jeez. And I did that for nine and a half years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The, the heating pads was a good one. Um, I I actually have a heating pad that is shaped to fit around my shoulders like a cape, and it buttons so I can let go. Of it. I don't have to worry about keeping it on my shoulder. Yeah, that's and, the thing. I can't I can't use heating pads because I have no feeling from the waist down. Right. Right, and and they're afraid of me being burned, you know, because yeah. I can't tell the temperature of the heating pad. Well, so. actually, Nancy, I learned you can do it, but most people can't afford it. There's actually a heating pads that, like, the nurse can set a temperature that a normal body can handle. That way, if uh -huh. your pad gets to that point, it shut itself off. But most people can't afford them because even the little square one I was looking at. They want thirteen hundred dollars for it. Just, just wow. big up for you to put your butt on. Yeah. They want hundred dollars. I'm like, oh hell no. Well, <laughs> I'll go get a turkey baster with a thermometer and go. Yeah, I'm yeah. Down. Turn it All right. Yeah. I, like, I like what Donna said here. Um, it helps to have a loved one motivate you daily. Yeah, that makes a big difference. I understand. Yeah. 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 And of course, what Ken said, I want to retire for 10 years now and live off of free money I get from Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, my, my, pain was always, my pain was always in a tub of water and ice. So, so my pain don't ever go away fully. It's, 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 yeah. it's either just a constant, I'm here, I'm here to where, hey, asshole, remember me? Yeah. 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 yeah, and right now I'm just learning how to my my doctor has controlled my pain just a little bit, but I'm learning how to deal with this pain. And right now I've got a double kidney infection and I have a lung infection. Oh, so I have I have I have fluid on the outside of my lining of my lungs. 
Uh, that sucks. In other words, you ain't quit to travel. Uh, no, I'm serious. That's what it means. Your body physically yeah. can't travel long distance. Yeah. Yeah. So my grandfather was the same way when he was about 58, 59. If, if it was a trip over 200 miles, he, his body would just... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the she doctor said have, it wouldn't have been so bad if I didn't have to sit in my wheelchair for three right, days. Right, you had no yeah. way to relax. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. You had nowhere to relax. Yeah. 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 Julie so. said I learned to stop when the pain starts instead of pushing myself, and the yeah. pain is ten, ten times worse the next day. Yep. Absolutely. That's yeah. Knowing your limits is very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was the hardest thing I had to learn was when my body said, "Hey, go sit down." No, you're not. You're not twenty no more. I had to learn to listen to it. Right. Yeah. I with that all the time because sometimes, um, like I have spots like on like on my stomach and even on my legs that I can't feel because of the past surgeries that I've had, and they're numb. So like when I overwork myself and then like the next day I can feel reverberating throughout my whole body and I know where the pain starts. It's just, I'm afraid if I put a like, pad on it or something, I'll burn myself. Cause I did that once already, but I, I need to, I need to start learning my, my, my limits and how far, I need to stop, you know, type thing. Yeah. I don't know. All I know is a lot of times I get, I get, I don't know if any of y'all ever had this where I get in my legs and my stomach, I'll get muscle pulls, you know, Charlie horses basically. Yeah. So mm-hmm. bad, I bruise. Yeah. 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 I right, could- where, right where it was hurting me. Like two days or a day later, I'll look down there and I'll see them, and they're deep. You know, it's not like a surface bruise, but it kind of almost looks like a vein exploded. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've I've had that before when my muscles have cramped that bad. Yeah. That sucks. Oh yeah. So. That's usually, and it usually happens when I'm dead asleep. The next thing I know, I'm on one leg skipping around, hopping with the other one, going, "Let go, let go." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then the wife's jumping up, whoa, whoa, whoa. you know, because she's I scared her half to death, and I'm screaming and hollering like someone coming there and stab me in the chest, you know. Yeah, I know another thing that helped me, and you know, you're talking about the Charlie horses. Um, I used to get them a lot more when I was younger, I don't so much now, and I think that's because I'm getting better nutrition now, yeah. but um. Yeah. I used to have a garden tub at this house that I lived in for several years and I would soak in the tub for like an hour at a time in really hot water. And well, see, I've, that was, yeah, I've tried that to, hot, yeah, I've tried, I've tried the hot water and that's why I learned. And I don't, I, you know, for whatever reason, I just did it just to see. And I do it better with cold water and ice in it. Okay. I don't, I guess I don't, I don't know what that means, but, I've tried the hot water and it, I mean, it helped, but it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. It helped yeah I, I put Epsom salts in my bath and then, yeah, you know, and soak in that. And that, if I don't do the Epsom salts, it doesn't do any good. But if I throw the Epsom salts in there, it makes a huge difference. Oh, yeah. And I found something that I just started trying last night. I got it off of Wish. And this is the first time I've ever tried hemp anything. It's hemp cream. Hemp cream. It's yeah. five thousand milligrams of hemp, and yeah. I got that. I mean, hemp is really expensive. Yeah. I got that a dollar plus shipping, so it was three dollars altogether. Yeah. And it. You made, like, I've just been using it on my um, knees just to try it out, and it's made a huge difference. Yeah. So I think that's something I will continue with because you can get it off of Wish for virtually nothing. Right. Right. So yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go search that um, after this because uh, <laughs> my back needs some. Yeah. It 
it has made a huge difference in my knees in less than 24 hours. Yeah, I have to put it on about every four to five hours, but it takes a really tiny amount. Yeah. And if you look, you go to Wish and just look up hemp oil, it'll come up with all sorts of hemp products, plus a lot of pipes and things like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and a few sex toys. That was kind of strange, but whatever. Yeah. But it'll it'll come up with a whole bunch of hemp products. And I always I look through them to see which one is free or a dollar or something like that. Hello, Eli. Yeah. And they then even, and they even they have the dissolvable there. ones. Yeah. What's that? They even have the dissolvable strips you can put under your tongue too. Oh really? Yeah. A lot hey, of people Eli. a lot of people won't order it from there because it's coming out of China. But you know, I tell people don't let that scare you. Try it somewhere. You know, yeah. if it don't work, then you know it's, it's bold. But the thing is, because, you know, people you say, don't go get your medicine out of Mexico. That's bull crap. Yeah. <laughs> After the time, the medicines I was getting out of Mexico was better than the ones here. Okay, fourth, Hannah, no problem. And a fourth of the price. <laughs> yep. If you want, you want to come up, um, we're talking about dealing with chronic pain in ways that we deal with our pain. So you are more than welcome to come up. I know you know quite a bit about this subject. So, uh, speaking of unhealthy food, I'll be ready right back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have any groceries in here right now, but I can't really get up to go get anything. So, do you have somebody that can bring you stuff or go get um, stuff for you? I'm gonna work on it, and I need to maybe order some Schwann's. Again, uh, yeah. When I can, when I can do that, I don't know. Yep. So, so going back to healthy eating, I kind of touched on that. I, in in really putting an effort into healthy eating, I'm finding. It's, yes, it is extremely expensive for the most part. But, like, I was walking around the grocery store and I realized that if I dumped my junk food budget mm -hmm. and spent all that on healthy food, like, um, you know, fruit, vegetables, things like that, um, it wouldn't make a difference in my grocery budget. It just meant changing the foods that I bought. Yeah. You just won't have junk to eat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if I don't have it in the house, I don't eat it. Therefore I don't gain weight from it. So it's kind of a win win. I still have to be careful about what I buy as far as produce, but I can yeah. afford basic produce and I can make things out of that basic produce that are healthy. Yeah. So well, I have found one alternative. I mean, it's not as good as the fresh stuff, but frozen, frozen vegetables and stuff. Yeah, I've been I've been eating a lot of frozen veggies lately. Yeah, because a lot of them now, even at the store I shop that saves a lot of money for me, they have like broccoli and all that in the bags that you can steam it right inside the bag for like three or four minutes and eat it. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and that tastes to me tastes a lot better than like boiling it on the stove or, or canned. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Canned is well it's yuck. canned is fully cooked before it even goes yeah. in the can. And the time you eat it, it's much. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Because I've and, been doing that a lot buying the frozen stuff because you can even get fruits, strawberries, stuff like that frozen. I mean, yeah, it's frozen, but hey. Yeah. yeah, at least you can afford the bag of them compared to what the you know bunch of the uh, cost you fresh, you know. Yep. And, and by the way, love you too, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> you. I have Count. been struggling with finding the right proteins because any meat that you buy is going to be expensive, but mm. you know I'm. I am looking at like different alternatives for fish and I know they say not to eat a lot of tuna because of the mercury and all that kind of stuff. So 
I'm trying to find some different alternatives for meats because I know that will make me feel better. If I eat too much red meat, I just don't feel good. Let me say, so, well, I can't eat too much red meat. My doctor told me no on the red meats. He said, yeah, well, that's because your digestive is the best. Yeah, her digestive system will allow her. To, yeah. yeah, yeah, I have. I have to be real careful with the red meat. I handle wild game better than I do like farm Great. raised beef. Hello, Jen. Well, um, as a I've, also, yeah, I've also found out that I, I even have to be careful with the fruits and vegetables I eat if they're too high fiber because I've been diagnosed with gastroparesis. Like yeah. they kind of diagnosed me, but my doctor yesterday confirmed it. And and I, I kind of ignored what he said because they've told me that several times. And one of the things he told me was, yeah, you need to eat lots of healthy food, but like lettuce and stuff that's real fibrous and hard to digest. You're not going to, your stomach isn't going to like you for it. I well, went to that, right. apartment, then went out to my parents' house. And what did I do? I ate a great big toss salad and I was miserable for like four hours. Let me tell you a little secret about the salad, though. The reason a lot of people have trouble with salad is because what's the majority of the salad we eat here in the state? Think about it. Yeah. Well, my bowels have a lot of problems with my salad. I can't eat it. Like my bowels go nuts. Yeah, but a lot of times people around here, most of the salad you eat in the States is iceberg lettuce. Yeah. An iceberg lettuce has no value to you whatsoever, except yep. for screwing your gut up. <laughs> yeah, I can handle spinach. I yeah. have no problem eating fresh spinach whatsoever. I, I've eaten huge salads made of fresh, fresh spinach and no problem. Yeah. Well, if you're actually going to have lettuce, you got to have like the romaine salad, you know, the, heart, the, the hearty green. That iceberg yeah. is basically just... Well, I forgot what the percentage of it is basically just water. Yeah. 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 It's a filler. That's all it is. It's just a yep. filler. <laughs> I can do cooked cabbage in small amounts, Jen. It Ooh. plays with my gut a little too much. I love cabbage. Ooh. But but I have found in the last week and couple days that I've been doing this program and making a real solid effort to eat as healthy as I can. I mean, even my snacks are like really super healthy as far as being junk food. They're healthy for junk food, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Hi, Jen. I, I physically feel better. Yeah. I, it, cutting out a lot of the carbs, even though that's what I crave, has made a huge difference and I'm craving them less. So Carbs. anything that bring my pain level down. What you're talking about. Yeah. I have no Carbs. idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. if it'll bring my pain level down, I will keep doing it. You know, I might not do it as intensely, but I will keep doing it because it has made a noticeable difference in my pain level. So yeah. As, as making an effort to get up more and play with the dogs and do not just stand there and throw a ball for them and make them bring it back, but actually run with them a little bit and walk the yard with them and do active things with them. That activity has made a huge difference in my pain level too. So, yeah. So, Eli. Are you there? <laughs> he's muted. Yep, he's muted. I think right when he come on, he was talking to somebody else. I think he had to mute himself and go do something. Oh, okay. Mama might have walked in. Well, yeah. I say mama, I mean his old lady, not his mama. Yeah. mama. Come in and say, apparently he didn't, apparently he had a honeydew. He needed to go <laughs> <laughs> something else that I, a couple other things, I guess, that I do when the pain is more than I would like and harder to deal with. Um, I watch TV. I'll, I'll binge watch a TV show or 
I'll throw in a movie that I really, really like and I can kind of veg out on, like that I've seen the movie a bunch of times. I don't have to think about it. I can just veg out. A lot of times it makes me fall asleep, which is great. I'm getting that sleep I need and then I don't have to think about it because I'm sleeping. Yeah. Um, the other, Another thing that I do, if I have the money, if I'm lucky enough to have the money, I've been known to get tattoos to deal with pain. Hello. If my pain level is really, really high, I have been known to go get a tattoo because that pain actually, it's such a different kind of pain that it like makes my brain think about that instead of the normal pain that right. I have. Yeah. So, um, my, my dad was a firm believer in that. Sorry. Yeah. But you know, as, as far as food is concerned too, you know, food, comfort food, has a way of making a person feel better too. It does. Yeah, but that can also yeah. become a crutch, and then you end up gaining a crap load of weight. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. It, uh, for me, that comfort that. food turns into mindless eating. Yep. And then, and then I've found that I've eaten an entire bag of cheese puffs in one sitting, and, and I know still, that's going to be the scale. And you still feel hungry. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. You yep. can. It, and after it's all like boredom, I mean, like, because you're actually doing so. Sorry, I'm folding clothes. So I'm going to, no. I'll, you know, I'll be on camera in a minute. Um, I think most times it's just boredom too, as well. And that's happened to me before where um, I have, hold on a sec, sorry, the uh, hay forms, because school forms today. Um, with me, it's just boredom. I mean, yeah, I'll go walk around, do what I got to do. But if I'm like doing something on online or something, you you know you you don't notice that you're eating those chips like like a lot or you're eating a lot or you're drinking a lot of soda like I'm big on soda. I mean I don't eat a lot. I mean of course I do. Okay, okay. if I'm a big man, if I'm gonna go eat, I'm gonna get me something good to eat when I go out and order. But at home, I'm not I'm constantly in the fridge. My big thing is just like soda water and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean vegetables. I eat well. My daughter eats vegetables, but I don't. That's kind of like silly there, but <laughs> um, um, I, I teach my daughter the right way. But at the same time, it's like with me, I'm just like, oh, I'm a guy. I don't care. Like, I mean, who's going to, you know, I got my fiance. She loves me. You know, I'm not trying to impress anybody. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want to like end up dying of a heart attack on my chair or something. Um, that's well, what yeah, You don't want to buy her a new boyfriend a boat and a truck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and like, yeah. We're, like we were just talking about, Eli. Eating right will actually help you feel better. It so does. eating those vegetables will make a difference in your pain level. Yeah, it's true. I need to start doing Yeah, but that. so will comfort food. <laughs> no, no, you're I, so I, right about that. I, well, mean, I, can, I, can, make I can make vegetables comfort food. I just, the way I like to eat vegetables, especially raw, I couldn't afford it. I can't yeah. either. Well, I can't afford to buy. I can't afford to buy healthy food here in Seattle. Oh, I, I know to, where you at. No, hell no. I got to. I got to buy what. I got to buy what's cheap, and that's that's top ramen noodles and exactly. Well, that's you know, why frozen now, noodles and things like yeah. that. Well, that's like now you realize the price difference when you was down here compared to where you're at. Exactly. Yeah. Because I tell a lot of people price around here, and they go, "Oh no, you're full of crap," and they come here and they're like, "Holy shit." And I said, well, that's what happens when you're not catering programs, feeding the people that don't want to work. Yeah. I mean, it's expensive, dude. I mean, you go to the store and you see a bag of vegetables. It's just like, then you have a kid that's picky, but then you make her do eat it. But at the same time, with that $5, you can go buy something, you know, like you can put well, something together. That's not I'll, give you a good, I'll give you a good example. My friend lives in New York. He said he's standing in the store. He's looking at a gallon of milk for his kids. And he's standing there, and this is what's going in his head. Okay, it's 538 for a gallon of milk. He's going, okay, a gallon of milk or a gallon of gas to get to work. Yeah, that's true. And then, you, you know, mm -hmm. if you got to pay the light bill and the rent, and mortgage, whatever, you're going to look at the kids. Sorry, kids, no milk for you this week. <laughs> well, that's mm -hmm. to be honest, too much. Like, like my kids, they, they drink milk like crazy. Yeah. And when, and it's expensive. Like even to get like a little half a gallon of milk, it's yeah. really expensive. And they swallow that up like it's nothing. Yeah, exactly. And that could be towards. I mean, to be honest, I'm glad my daughter don't like milk. So I mean, 
Well, she likes milk. Of course, everybody likes milk, but she doesn't drink it that much. She doesn't go out of her way to get it. Yeah, she doesn't. <laughs> I don't like Donna, milk. Donna discovered just by her own experience that if you go without eating veggies, you don't feel good. Yeah, I think right. you're right. But at the same time, if you have you some chocolate and you're doing something you're like in your bedroom or out there living room, you're like, oh, nice. I want, I want that. And it'll make you feel better. But at the end, it makes you feel like, oh my God, it makes you feel such like a pig. Yeah. What's up, Jen? And, Jen and Eddie and Jen. Jen from Eddie and Jen. Okay. I'll well, not even that. Right. Since I've been trying to change uh -huh. my diet. I've also learned, even in the so-called healthy crap, yeah. there's so much sodium in it. It's freaking ridiculous. Wow. Yep. And and with me, with my high blood pressure and problems I have with the coil in my head. I got to keep my blood pressure at a certain level or below, and I'm already on three blood medications just to keep it, you know, under normal, you know, what normal for me anyway. And yep. I'm looking at bags of vegetables and, and stuff, and I'm looking at it, and sodium's like freaking 800 milligrams or better. I'm like, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yep. The cheaper foods are cheaper than the healthier foods. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. You're thinking, do I want to live or die? It might you might not die that day, but it adds up. Yep. Yeah, but you know, if I was being like my friend standing there going, hmm, a gallon of milk for the kids or a gallon of gas so I can get to work and get another paycheck. Exactly. So yep. yeah. I mean, you know. It's hard to decide. Well, I don't know. Usually I can tell you which way it goes. You're gonna be able to get to work so you can get that check. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not yeah. way, man. Yeah. You know what? It they they, they, they so I'm sorry. The kids can, the kids can live without like the kids. I'm sorry, the kids can live without milk. I understand food is different, but when it comes down to milk, who needs a milk? I mean, milk. Yeah, you gotta make you gotta have milk to like make stuff, food and everything. But yeah. I mean, milk is nothing. Well, like if we, was, if we was drinking milk like we used to, I'd say get the milk. But the milk you buy now is so watered down. Even even the one that says D. Whole milk. I got. I got bad news for you. Forty percent of that in that jug is water. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you get two percent or one percent. You're basically it's a. You know, they take a gallon of water, take about that much up, put milk in it, just to color it white. Yeah. yeah. Like right now, I'm drinking cream soda, and I'm thinking, huh, maybe I could drink a water. Yeah. Who knows? I I cut out soda. Um, like a little over a year ago, when my stomach really started acting up, I cut out a lot of stuff that I thought might be affecting it. And soda was one of those things. Yeah. And I lost weight. Yeah. I lost oh, yeah. like 50 pounds. As soon as I got away from sugar cokes, I lost almost 35, 38 pounds. Yep. Yeah. I need to start giving that up. That's the main thing that's really hurting me right now. But then I went to Coke Zero because I was like, well, it's no sugar, you know, because I'm diabetic and all that. And I'm like, well, it's no sugar and it, and it tastes pretty decent. I don't have that aspartame aftertaste. But yep. then after years of drinking that and got hooked onto that, I found out, well, it's loaded with sodium. <laughs> yep. I mean, everything. Yeah, they cut the sugar out and up the sodium. <laughs> everything you yep. eat or drink has something that's going to make you gain weight or is deadly towards you your body well yeah that's buddy. that's why you got to take control of it and instead of like for example i like slushies that's pretty obvious by now yeah and i i was buying them at the local gas station had no idea what was in them and my best friend got me that slushy maker i started making them myself and i started losing a little bit of weight and I attribute it mostly to the fact that I'm not drinking six to 700 calories or more worth of ice yeah. every day. Instead, it's like 300 calories and I'm in control of how much syrup I put in there. And so I'm in control of the calories. And like yeah. my parents got a soda stream for Christmas. And so they make their own soda. So they're in control of exactly what goes into it, how many calories are in it, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that makes a big difference. Just 
you know, I make, I don't, I try not to buy like canned soups, for example. I put together my own soups in the crock pot well, so yeah. that I know how much salt is in there. I know how much everything is in there. Yeah, and read, read a can of Campbell's chicken noodle soup. It's oh, ridiculously salty. Yeah. And we grew up thinking that was a healthy alternative, especially when you were feeling bad. And I'm looking at them like, well, no wonder if they made you feel different. It had so much sodium and you couldn't get rid of all you. <laughs> yeah. Blew it like crazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. I mean, I try to get, I mean, you know, I, I buy apples, mm -hmm. I buy oranges, and I buy, you know, like all the other stuff. Yeah. But I just can't seem to shake the Coke and my, <laughs> and my chocolates. It feels like it feels I like I drink a lot of Coke, but I drink it to settle well, my I get, tummy. I can through. tell you why you can't shake the Coke. Because let me tell you, if you was a quick cold turkey right now, <laughs> you would be running down the store to get a six pack of Coke because the headache you would get from the withdrawals of the caffeine would, yeah. would knock you down. Because I went yeah. for a long time without drinking Coke and I got headaches hell like hell and the doctor asked me have you changed anything like that's a lot i gave up cokes i've been drinking a lot more water and, and very little bit of tea because tea's full of caffeine too but yeah. not like coke is and he told me he said well you need to drink more tea because he said what it is you have having withdrawals from the caffeine yeah right or he's told me to go buy some it's uh, me. It's me. since i'm on low dose aspirin to go and uh buy the ones with caffeine <laughs> Sorry, that was my avatar thing for the, my next topic. Nancy said that Coke settles her stomach. Yeah. It settled mine too. And that's, and I off, I found that the Coke slushies at the gas station do the same thing. I think it's the Coke syrup. There's something in that that yeah. has a good effect on the stomach. And so that's, I drink one every day and. It makes a big difference on my stomach for some reason. So, well, I gotta admit, me drinking the soda is making my thigh hurt more. And like, well, my mind's been occupied on the paperwork I need to do for my daughter. And like, um, I wasn't even worried about it, but now it's just like, okay, I'm not trying to think about it. I'm just like, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm a hypochondriac. I don't know, yeah. but to me, pain's real. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's an interesting thing that you just said because. Just about everybody that I have met with chronic pain, I'm not everybody, but just about everybody that I've actually sat down, had a conversation with, at one point or another, they have wondered if they were a hypochondriac. I have wondered that. Me too. And it, it wasn't until I started getting different tests done and them saying, no, you actually have this. You actually, I'm diagnosing you with this. And it was like, oh, okay, I... I have a reason to be in pain. Okay. You know, yeah. it yeah. took me many years to, for doctors to convince me that it wasn't just in my head, that there was physical reasons for my pain. Same. So I think yeah. a lot of people go through that. Yeah. I went yeah. through that for the longest time myself. I'm, I guess you know, I'm always my doctor kept telling me, no, you're, you know, you've got this, you've got this, and <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. I've, I've always been glad I'm one of the people, I, I guess, because I latched on to my need to be a control freak. Because I've had doctors that hand me freaking bottles this tall full of pain pills and stuff, and then they get mad when I bring it back to them and it's still full. <laughs> <laughs> but I told them, I said, I've always been one of them. I've, you know, I just, you know, I've never had what, what most people would call an addictive personality, but I didn't know. I was always also didn't want to chance it either. Yeah. So I've been a total control for you when it comes to that. She can tell you, I've had bottles on top of bottles of Oxycontin. I've flushed down the toilet. I did too. Well, yeah. Because yeah. um, you know what you think about it? It don't do nothing for you. In back of your yeah. mind, you're thinking they're bad. They're bad. So that means the pain that still continues because yeah. you're worried about getting hooked to those things. And that's why I don't do it. They they gave me pill. Um oh yeah, that's what yeah. then they call me and they say, Hey, are you gonna pick them up? I said no, because I'm not gonna get on them. Yeah. So they so they up my um gabapentin, 
And I'm like, great, that's going to mess up my liver now. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's what always bothered me. They said, well, here, take this to help you with your pain. Then I get home, research it. And yeah, it'll help you with that pain, but there's 23 side effects. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and I know some of them are, are possible side effects, but who wants to change your liver shutting down? <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 knowing my luck, I'm mm -hmm. one of the. I'm one of the five percent that's gonna get their liver. Yeah, you're about like, like two out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like dying in your office. I was like, I knew it. That's gonna no. That will be on my gravestone. I knew yeah. it. <laughs> no, I used to tell my doctor. I see the reason I don't do it because I'm the I'm the guy. If I did do it and you flipped in the book, my picture be going. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy that got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I know all about pain, guys. I mean. <laughs> well, one of, one of the things that I'm I'm I've known this all along, but being married to Ken and watching him deal with his pain has yeah. made me really realize how different everyone's pain really is, mm, and yep. the way that we deal with it is really different. Yeah. I mean, I'm Ken half the time when I tell him I'm in pain, he doesn't believe me because I'm not acting like it necessarily. At least that's what I, what I'm getting from him. You know, I don't yeah. act like it. I don't moan and groan and roll around and whatever. Me. I just, yeah. yeah, it's to me, I've, I've been through all that and it doesn't get me anywhere. So I just don't do it. It doesn't accomplish anything. Well, and that's, that's usually when you get people say, oh, you hypochondriac. <laughs> yeah, no, with my pain, oh my god, I cannot my my thigh. It like oh like you know what I mean? And I cry, I'm just like in bed, I'm just like I need to get some ice and I'm just like oh my god, like I mean it's happened twice only. But that's if I don't sleep at night and I stay up and I'm not gonna do that no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need your sleep to deal with the pain. Mm, it is horrible. I cry, I it takes me three hours just to get myself out of bed and go get some ice. Yep. Yep. Well, it ain't been a long time. <laughs> what, Nancy? So I know. It takes me a long time to get myself out of bed to go get something I need from the kitchen or some. Because I right now I have such limited movement, I really can't move anything from like my. my like my stomach down. I can't I can't move my body hardly at all anymore right now. Yeah. I can move my arms and that's about it. <laughs> yep. Don't my you, arms my hands. Nancy, don't well, you feel like you gotta like like somehow like well with me? I gotta actually like massage it or something for it to move to get it from hurt. I mean you gotta find your way. Don't you do you ever get that way? We gotta find your way like do we do a special yeah, but I realize Eli she can't feel that part either. Can't feel it whatsoever. What? Yeah. From the waist down, she can't feel anything. Oh wow! I'm so sorry no. about that. Yeah. So that. massaging it and exercising it really, to her, is not a benefit because she couldn't feel the difference anyway. I didn't yeah, know that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I really didn't. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm totally. I, I'm uh, from the waist down. I'm. I. I am totally. I have no feeling at all, and I cannot walk at all. Yeah. So I have to literally be careful because I have to transfer in and out of the wheelchair and, and things like that. And even sometimes I fall from that if I fall short of my transfer, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. Including, including that crazy right leg she got so likes to go where it wants to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I'd watch her get in and out of the car and I'd watch that right leg right when she's getting ready to throw her weight up to do the transfer. It wants to whoop. She'd be like, "Come here, you!" Son. Yeah, <laughs> it wants to run away from me, and I'm like, "Get back over here!" <laughs> Come on. Well, you know, it's like that little guy down the bottom of the second floor from me, and you tell him you're gonna throw down a 25 pound bag, and he's gonna catch it. He's gonna sidestep, say, "I don't think so." <laughs> yeah. it's hard to lift my legs sometimes because my legs are such dead weight. I, it takes mm -hmm. both my hands just to pull my one leg up and uh yeah yeah well i told you you need them shoes like my aunt died. i need to get a hold of her find out where she got them from how much they were yeah they come up on the side of the inner knees and they actually had a handle where she can just 
Boom, you know, like, get the hell over here. <laughs> well, I, I used to think with her like a saddle, you know. Come on. <laughs> Grab a rain. Donna, Donna pointed something out. I just want to kind of throw this in. Yeah. Um, she said that the reason she went through her pain was from low thyroid. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, kind of along the lines of what I was saying about everybody experiences pain different. Different yeah. reasons for pain cause different forms of pain. And so, yeah, everybody everybody kind of experiences pain in their own way. Yeah. And it's, I, I find that, you know, even if I'm, I'm having knee pain and Ken is having knee pain, our pain is completely different even though we're having pain in the same part of the body. Yeah. And so yeah. it's hard to... It's hard for me to know what he's feeling, even though I'm having pain in the same place. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, with me, like it, it confuses me sometimes. Or so I'm getting my injections just next next Thursday. Um. But anyways, um, it confuses me because sometimes it's coming from my like my thigh by my inner thigh, my pull, and and I'm thinking okay, but then I go put ice on it and it don't it don't work. So it's right here, you know, where the crease is at, you know, where your belt lines at. Like a little mm-hmm. bit more down, it's right there and it goes away. And I'm just like, wait a minute, like I don't get it where it's coming from. And that's mm-hmm. why sometimes I go back to, I mean, that what they told me is arthritis in my hips, but at the same time, yeah. like, you go put ice at a certain spot and it doesn't do anything because there's so much ice you can put on your body, or else you know you're gonna get not not frostbite, but like you're you're gonna mess up your skin. Something you might want, to, might want to try instead of putting the ice directly where you think the pain is, put the ice at the closest point where there's like a major artery. Yeah. <clears throat> so like you've got you've got like a you've got the femoral artery on the inside of your thigh. Yeah. Yeah. So put the ice on your femoral artery. Wow. And for about ten or fifteen minutes, no more than that. And what it does is it cools the blood going into the rest of your leg, coming yep. back up into your hip. Yep. And will just by virtue of that will cool off the area that hurts and will reduce the inflammation. Yeah, but where's that at? I'm sorry, where's that? The the, your femoral artery is on the basically where your leg meets meets your like it's right up oh. at the crease of your leg. Okay, where your leg the, and your body. Yeah, it's on the, it's on the inside, and um, I would show you, but it would look kind of wrong. So yeah. <laughs> 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 See, that's where uh, like, it, like, yeah, it's like, like, yeah, all my thighs on the area where it hurts sometimes, but sometimes, like, I notice yeah. it's on the side of my leg going up, like, mm-hmm. and it's on the side, and I just don't get what, I mean, how pain <laughs> travels, you know? Mm-hmm. Trust me, after all my procedures, I know exactly where that artery is, because that's how they get in and go all the way up to my brain. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Eli was saying he doesn't understand how pain travels. Having yeah. having fibromyalgia, yeah. you learn pretty quickly that pain travels wherever the hell it wants to, whenever the hell it wants to, for whatever yeah. reason it wants to. Exactly. And it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean you injured that. It doesn't mean yeah. that you hurt yourself. Nope. That's just where the pain has decided to settle for that day. So. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I know what you mean. My but, you know, uh, well, you got to remember, too, there's two main heat releases on your body, between your legs and the top of your head. Mm-hmm. And the bottom of your feet. Well, yeah. your bottom of your feet is not as significant as the other two, because if you think about when you're in the cold, what's the first thing, two things that gets cold on your body? Your feet and your hands. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. It's because your body is actually shutting that part of your body down to keep the heat in the core. All right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
I'm gonna say gun. Because you, when you start freezing to death, your body starts shutting down. It starts with your fingers and your toes, then your feet, your hands, then your arms and your legs before it ever shuts down the core. Yeah. You know? yeah. It'll try to keep you alive as long as it can. But the thing is, people don't realize when you're out in the freezing like that, it's painful as hell because you're basically slowly dying. You can't, you know, your body's trying to save you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Donna, okay. Donna brings up a good point. She says when her ear hurts, it makes her whole head hurt. Yeah. Have any of you found that when you have an actual place that you can pinpoint on your body that hurts, but then everything around it hurts too? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, my knees have been bugging me real bad, and yeah. I know that there's nothing wrong with my thighs. And I know there's nothing wrong with my calves, nope. but they uh, ache too. Yeah. You know? Well, mm -hmm. I, I'll give you a good example of that. Before my two started aching, my knee and my hip on that one side was acting up. And then the next thing I know, two days later, my jaw was swollen up. Mm -hmm. And every time I would push down on that damn thing, I'd feel it shoot all the way down to my knee. Yep. I tell you what, this chair makes it worse because it's compressing my thigh, and mm. it makes it worse than pushing. in that's why I sit on my bed. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do Maybe. right now. I switch. That's why you need Maybe. to get a regular chair instead of a gaming chair. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about doing that. What do you mean, like regular chair? Like, cause I mean, they're expensive. An office, uh, something like this. So I got a gaming chair, but a lot of times I might get I, one. I switch to a chair like this here. See. Uh, just a regular oh, so okay wide well, body yeah. no sides to it yeah i need something like that how much yeah. you want for it ah, just kidding. <laughs> 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 do like i do brother you, you know the trash stay in your area drive Hell down yeah road. damn straight go to goodwill ah. anthony, oh, wait a minute anthony anthony wait a minute that's not your chair no more that's marley girl's chair uh, yeah <laughs> that's the chair she sits in to protect daddy yeah. Yeah. She'll sit right in that chair and watch me. Because <laughs> when, 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 yeah, when I when I was there, breeze, Marley oh was my sitting. God, I'm like hurting. Yeah. Uh, when I was there, Marley was sitting in that chair and she watched her daddy and watched me and watched her daddy and watched me. She mm -hmm. kept a good eye out for me. I couldn't get anywhere near Anthony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she won't even let my wife near me. She don't even like her own mama coming up, especially if she comes up to hug me and kiss me. She goes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I tell oh, people yeah. I got two wives. I got a full-size wife uh -huh. and a miniature wife. <laughs> <laughs> and the way she acts is kind of like an overprotective wife or husband. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, don't, don't you hug him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> She almost has that look mm -hmm. in her face, like, don't you hug him, that's my man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and anytime I moved around in their house, anytime I took my chair and headed towards the kitchen, or if I would head towards the uh, a Max's cage or whatever, or head towards Anthony's area, or even Donna, I mean, Marley would come over and she's like, don't you even think about it. She would jump up and she would start licking me to death. Yeah. <laughs> that's her way of throwing your attention off. Yeah, yeah. Like, pay attention to me. Don't pay attention to them. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've kind of gone over lots of things about dealing with pain, talked a lot about food, a few other things. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this so it's a nice, short, watchable yeah. stream. There's a lot of good information here. Hopefully, yeah. somebody. Okay. And get some good ideas. If you guys want, I'll go ahead and start up another stream, and we can just sit and BS for a while. That's fine. Okay. All right. So, I'll be here. Sure. All right. So All right. I'll, I'll go ahead and shut this down and start up a another one to just sit and talk. So okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank cool. you for coming up, guys. Cool. Thanks for being in the Hopefully chat. Hopefully, I get the notification. But now look. Yeah. Later, everybody. All right. Go later. All right. We'll Bye. see you guys later.